Friends, we are so glad that you are taking the time to join us tonight. Let's begin our gathering by joining our hearts in prayer. Holy and gracious God, you know all about the church that gathers, the church that is sent, the church that is scattered. And so tonight, Lord, as we gather online to celebrate all that is unfolding in the life and ministry of our beloved church, we pray that you would be especially present among us in all the places we are and in all of the ways that we are together one church. Lord, I pray that as we listen to updates of ministry and hear from leaders and listen to one another, that you would open our ears to hear your good news that you would open our eyes and our minds and our hearts to all the possibilities that you are laying ahead of us. Make us wise enough to follow, Lord, and help us to discern which way to go. Fill us with a holy imagination so that we can see all that you have in store for us, so that we can be tuned in to what you may call us to do for your kingdom here in this corner of our community and around the world. Lord, we are so thankful to be your people, and we are thankful to gather here tonight. We are thankful for all the ways you are at work among us. Lord, we give you thanks for this time to gather. We give you thanks for your love and grace. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Good evening, friends. My name is Kelly Williams, chair of the MDUMC Church Council, and I want to welcome you to the gathering. If this is your first time joining us, we extend a special welcome to you. Here's a preview of what to expect this evening. We are all aware of the unprecedented times in which we live, which makes it necessary for this meeting to come to you via video but I know that we are just as excited and eager to share with you some of the incredible ways we are learning, living, giving, and serving together. Tonight, you will hear what our ministry has looked like in this season of pandemic, receive an update from several of our committees, learn about our new strategies around generosity, and of course, hear from our new senior pastor, Dr. Brad Morgan. We will also have a time of reflection and prayer to lift up our congregation and all of those whom it serves. Again, I am excited that you are here and we are going to start by taking a look at what our ministries have been up to over the last several months. Then you will hear reports from our finance and SPR committees, followed by two pastoral reports. Check out how MDUMC's ministry is still thriving during this season. This quarter has been unique, challenging, and different than anything we might have expected. But as we approach the fall and all the opportunities that a new season brings, we're looking back gratefully at all that God has accomplished through the work of our church and community over the past few months. We greeted Pastor Brad and the Morgan family with a special drive through welcome and shared in communion, a powerful way for many of us who had not received communion for many months to have our first taste of this sacrament with our new senior pastor. Summer is always a vital time for serving, both inside and outside the walls of MDUMC. Your donations of canned goods, other non-perishable food, diapers, and hygiene products have made it possible for 1,500 bags of groceries to go to our neighbors in need. We've already hosted one distribution event on our main campus where 200 families and individuals received food and other necessary items. Your monetary donations in partnership with Memorial Assistant Ministries gave 120 students at Thornwood Elementary access to the uniforms and supplies they need for a successful school year. Although our teams couldn't travel to Jamaica this year, we held a virtual mission trip where we prayed and worshiped alongside our friends in Jamaica via Zoom, as well as provided meals, VBS and school supplies and construction materials for church repairs. 
These are just a few of the ways that we've still been able to demonstrate God's love through acts of service in our neighborhoods and all over the world, even from a distance. We are so grateful for every person who prayed, volunteered, organized, planned, donated, or supported our local and global missions in any other way. In the first week of August, our MDUMC kids armored up with truth, peace, faith, and salvation at an at-home vacation Bible school. They sang, danced, made crafts, learned Bible stories, went on a quarantine quest scavenger hunt around our neighborhood, and closed the week with a pop-up celebration in the main campus parking lot, complete with some North Castle snow flurries. We loved seeing our kids learn about God's love in this unique way. In the following week, church members and friends of all ages and abilities joined together via Zoom for Super Place Camp, a vacation Bible school opportunity for adults with special needs. Their joy was evident, even through a computer screen, and we are so grateful to all who gave their time, energy, and resources to make an impact in hundreds of lives over these two weeks. It's been so exciting to welcome this year's confirmation class of 70 sixth graders into the life of the church over the last several weeks. Individually with their families, they committed to uphold MDUMC with their prayers, presence, gift, service, and witness. The beginning of this school year looks different, but we still held a drive-through blessing of the backpacks with prayer for our students, teachers, administrators, and parents as they courageously take on this back-to-school season. In worship, we focused on how we can live as a unified body through the Spirit even though we are physically distant, through our separated worship series. Then, we spent a summer in the Psalms following our Expectation series, where we talked about what we expect from God, what God expects from us, how our expectations have been overturned this year, and how God continues to surprise us with grace. Although this coming Sunday will be our 25th week of online-only worship, we've still made Sunday mornings count by sharing the live stream with friends, interacting on social media, and taking steps to make our homes into sanctuaries. We've also come together for a total of four evenings of pop-up worship where we could safely worship outside at a distance. The joy at each of these services has been evident and we've loved seeing your smiling faces, even under your mask. We're grateful for an adaptable congregation that recognizes that the many ways that God speaks to us in our lives and in the world. These are just some of the highlights from the past few months and we're looking forward to a dynamic fall with continued online opportunities for community a new study in Romans with Pastor Brad, a new session of Alpha, and much more as we continue to take our next steps in learning, living, giving, and serving. Nothing that MDUMC is able to do to help usher in the kingdom of God would be possible without you. It's through the support of your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness that every single good work takes place through this church, whether inside or outside our walls. Thank you for your attentiveness to God's call for your life and for being a partner in ministry. We're so glad you're here. Good evening, church. I'm Scott McKnight, Chair of Staff Parish Relations Committee. Uh, my remarks tonight will be brief. I first just want to welcome Dr. Morgan and his family to Houston. Uh, this has been a very interesting and challenging time. Uh, I will say that I'm fortunate that the Staff Parish Relations Committee was able to meet with Pastor Brad and his family before the pandemic, and we've gotten to know them fairly well. I pray that you as a congregation will have the same opportunity in the coming months. The announcement that Dr. Morgan would be taking over as senior pastor of our church was made on March 13th. A lot has happened since then. Uh, I can assure you that Pastor Brad has been very involved in the inner workings of our church ever since March 13th when this announcement was made. This was even while he was senior pastor at Williams Memorial United Methodist Church. As you know, he took over on July 1st 
And I hope and pray that you've already had the opportunity to see the personality and the traits that really drew the Staff Parish Relations Committee, as well as Bishop Jones, to Pastor Brad. I also hope that you as a congregation will continue to welcome the Morgan family and make them feel at home here in Houston. Second, we've had several position changes since our last gathering. Uh, as you know, Drew Essen is now a licensed local pastor on our staff. He's also been named Director of Guest Services and Development. Julia Jordan has taken the Director of Communications role uh, here at MDMC. Third, as you're aware, the Paycheck Protection Program loan uh, was received later this, or this past spring. This allowed us as a committee and as administration to keep our staff on hand at their current salaries. I can assure you that our committee continues to work with church administration to examine staff roles, responsibilities, as well as efficiency during COVID-19. And lastly, I just want to express a really big thank you from our committee um, number one, to Reverend Jarbo and the clergy. Uh, between March 13th, when the announcement was made, and July 1st, Reverend Jarbo has done an outstanding job as the acting senior pastor at our church. With the support of the other clergy, the transition was very smooth, even in the middle of a pandemic. And again, I'd like to thank and commend the clergy and the other staff. Second, the communications team. I know we've mentioned this before, but I continue to want to express our sincere appreciation to the communications team because in fact, they're really allowing for our church to remain a community during these troubling times. We wanna thank the Vacation Bible School team uh, for an outstanding program. And there are so many others that we could thank, uh, but again, the committee is very appreciative of those uh, who have helped out during COVID-19. Thank you so much for your support. God bless you. Hello, MDMC. Thanks for tuning in tonight. This evening, I'll provide you with an update on behalf of the Finance Committee to give you a full picture of where we stand so far this year. But before I get into the numbers, I want to make sure to say thank you for your faithful support of MDMC this year. We know, we know 2020 has been challenging and uncertain for everyone, and the future still remains uncertain. But as usual, you all have answered the call and have stepped up in so many ways, including financially and you'll see that in our numbers. And while the year-end push is still ahead of us, I have great optimism we'll meet all of our obligations in 2020. And when we do, just like every other year, it will be because of your generosity. So again, thank you for everything you're doing to support MDUMC. And now I'll jump into the numbers. Through the first half of 2020, financial contributions to the church were about $2.3 million, and that's roughly equal to where we were through June of last year. Contributions that we're able to track to individuals or families are up compared to last year. This shows, our, this shows our congregation is embracing other ways of giving outside of worship, either through our online platform or by mailing contributions to the church. Now, in a normal year, we'd of course want our giving to be on an upward trajectory and not flat. And that's because we're a growing and vibrant church and we always have been. But this is by no means a normal year, considering what we faced in 2020, unable to gather for worship since March, and on top of that, a change in pastoral leadership. We're very pleased about where giving has come in so far this year. On the expense side of things, it should come as no surprise that our church's expenses are about $100,000 lower than they were through June of last year. And this is largely driven by lo lower programming expenses as a result of the shutdown and lower operating expenses since our campus is getting less use throughout the week and on Sundays. Dropping to the bottom line, our church sits at a year-to-date deficit of about $325,000, which is actually better than where we were this time last year. Although we haven't formally closed the July financials just yet, we do have good visibility into our giving for last month, and I can report our trends are still holding and that our giving is still within 1% of where we were last year. 
So to wrap up on the numbers, we're in good financial position and in a better position than initially feared at the start of the shutdown. So again, thank you. Now, of course, as you've heard me say before, our giving pattern is such that we rely on a really strong year end. Most of you know that December is always a make or break month for us. We often bring in between one and a half and $1.6 million in a typical December. We know we're still facing a good deal of economic uncertainty, especially here in Houston. And so we'll continue to watch our numbers over the next few months and make adjustments if necessary. Now, one way the Finance Committee has worked to protect against budget shortfalls has been our participation in the Small Business Administration's Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP, as it's more commonly known. In my email to all of you back in April, I outlined the structure of the program, and so tonight I want to give you an update of where things sit with our PPP loan. We've applied, we applied for a loan of just over $1 million, and we received the proceeds of that loan in April. The size of that loan was driven off the payroll of the church and the MDUMC weekday school. There are many details around the program that have been very well publicized and too many to describe in this setting. But the most important feature of this loan is that it is forgivable as long as certain criteria are met. In June, we were eligible to apply for forgiveness with our bank, but we had to wait for their process to open up, which it did this month. And so about three weeks ago on August 4th, we sent our, for, our forgiveness application in for approval. And as of this recording, our application is still under review by the bank, but we expect it to move on to the SBA soon for their review and approval, which is the last step in the forgiveness process. We have applied for and expect to get approval to have the entire loan forgiven. The portion of the loan proceeds that will be allocated to the church budget will be just over $700,000 with the remainder allocated to the weekday school, which has a separate budget from the church. As I mentioned before, we are in unprecedented times and there still remains a great deal of economic uncertainty ahead of us. And so the way the PPP loan helps us out is once our forgiveness application is approved, the loan liability will be extinguished and then that amount can then be treated as income and will act as a buffer against any shortfalls we may experience as the year progresses. So in closing, I want to thank you again uh, for tuning in tonight. We all know in times like this, it's more important than ever that our church remain on solid financial footing. We must continue to serve those in need, and that need is even greater right now. So thank you for your continued support, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Good evening, friends. I'm Pastor Drew Essen, and I have a few minutes tonight to talk a little bit about my new role as Associate Pastor of Development and Guest Services. And let me say what a time it is to have this role in the life of our church. I'd like to briefly discuss some of the ways that we're working to prayerfully and strategically reinvigorate and reestablish our culture of generosity at MDUMC. However, before we get to that, it's important to voice what we all know to be true, is that business is not as usual in our lives right now. Life has changed. The pandemic has affected each one of us in different ways. Members of our congregation and community have experienced loss of jobs, the loss of loved ones, and all of us have lost the ability to worship together on our campuses. We want you to know that we're praying for each of you and that we're here to help walk with you in whatever ways that you need. The ways that we do everyday activities, such as shopping, traveling, and going to school, are now operating under new and frequently challenging circumstances. Even the methods, the, the way that we do church, has changed as well. From online services to connecting through Zooms, we've had to re-examine what it means to be a church during COVID-19. But with all of that chaos and all of that change and uncertainty, many things in our church have remained constant and even grown. God is working through MDUMC. And as you've heard tonight uh, about some of the incredible stories, you've heard about our food ministry, feeding hundreds of families every single week, providing not just food, but also hope 
for those who need it most right now. That's because of your generosity. We've provided robust worship experience online and in person at our pop-ups where the Holy Spirit is coming into people's hearts, healing us of our brokenness, and giving us all a place to celebrate the source of our hope. That's because of your generosity. We have maintained the marking of time in our young people's lives, confirming over 76 graders one by one, blessing hundreds of backpacks, and restarting new and innovative ways for our children and youth to grow in their faith and service to others. That's because of your generosity. Your gifts have made all of these things and more possible. This pandemic has not slowed God's work in our community and world. And I'm here tonight to ask for your continued help. In my first month in this new role, I've worked with Dr. Morgan and our staff to structure how we will strategically communicate and share in the practice of generosity. I think having clear communication and expectations for our congregation is of the utmost importance as we expand our ministry for the exciting future that God has for us. As we talk more about the blessing it is to give, you'll hear much of the conversation structured around three areas, tithing, teamwork, and transparency. Our first strategic pillar is the teaching of a tithe. We will teach the biblical principle of a tithe that 10% of our income should first go back to God. Tithing is a step of faith that indicates that we, as individuals and families, are trusting God with our finances. Now, we know that for many, if not most, the concept seems like a challenge, especially in a time of COVID and all the uncertainty that comes with it. Even for me, it's something that my wife and I are working towards each year. What's worked well for us is to start with a percentage of our income and work each year to up at one percentage point. This strategy helps each one of us work towards the biblical principle of a tithe. The second way that we're going to frame our strategy is through teamwork. We teach that all members of MDUMC have a collective responsibility to support the church's mission of creating disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. One of my favorite moments so far of being a pastor is what I mentioned a few minutes ago was confirming 70 students um, one by one over the last several weeks. After each student was confirmed, they were welcomed into the life of the church by promising to uphold MDUMC with their prayers, their presence, their gifts, their service, and their witness. Saying this over 70 times as a response will serve as a great reminder that every member of MDUMC had committed to this when they joined the church, many times in front of our entire congregation. The reality of our situation is that only about a quarter of households who indicate their membership with Memorial Drive United Methodist Church have given financially so far this year. This is an area of growth that we need to address strategically and prayerfully. Supporting the mission of the church is a team sport, and each one of us has a role to play. The third way that we're going to frame our strategy is with transparency. We teach that because we are all contributors of MDUMC, we have a responsibility to share our church's financial state early, often, and intentionally. We want to build a culture where talking about generosity and giving is not awkward, but it's a joy for us to share and celebrate the ways that God is moving in our midst and the ways that we get to empower each other to be a part of that work. One of the key ways that we're going to work to communicate more intentionally is through a new quarterly report. I hope that you have received your report for the second quarter of 2020 in the mail or electronically. This report aims to provide our members with the current information about our ministry, finances, and other statistics and stories. Along with this report, every single member receives a statement of giving that reflects their financial generosity thus far over the calendar year. 
We believe that these two pieces will help be a mirror for us that provides a reflection as to how we as a church are learning, living, giving, and serving together in ministry. By focusing on these three things, I believe that we will see our congregation step up in generosity as we have never seen before. In just a moment, you're going to hear more about the exciting future that God is calling us to from Dr. Morgan. And that's going to require us, each one of us, to step out in faith, to complete the work that God has put before us. The good news is this, friends, that we have already stepped up this year as a church. And I believe that God is calling us to step up once again. Through tithing, teamwork, and transparency, we are stepping out in faith and trusting God with our whole selves. I want to thank you for your commitment to MDUMC and for every single act of sacrificial giving that you provide. I want you to know that if I can serve you in any way or talk to you more about growing your family's generosity, I'd love to sit down with you. You can find my email address below or on the church website. Thank you for your time tonight, and thank you for your generosity. Hello, I'm Brad Morgan, the senior pastor of Memorial Drive United Methodist Church, and it fills my heart with joy to be able to say that. It is such a delight to be here with you one of the great clergy on staff with so many wonderful, talented pastors to get to serve with and an amazing staff. I just want to say about you as a church, wow, I have been learning many of the activities y'all are involved in, in our community and throughout the world, and it blesses me abundantly to be a part of this great church. I cannot thank you enough for the warm welcome you have showed my family and me, it has been such a blessing to become a part of you, and we are thrilled and excited to be a part of this great church. I especially want to thank Reverend Michael Jarbo and his role as acting senior pastor. He has done a phenomenal job in this time of transition, and it is a blessing to serve with him and this amazing clergy team. I look forward to what God is doing through us now and in the years to come. In my last report to the gathering, we were anticipating my arrival, and I mentioned my 90-day plan that I had prepared to get ready for this time and season in which I'd be preaching, learning, and meeting. Due to the pandemic, that has, of course, been adjusted quite a bit, but I am still preaching, learning, and and meeting. I'm preaching as often as is possible and look forward to this fall as we begin a class together on Wednesdays. I've been learning about the organizational structures of the church, your mission in the world, and how you literally serve your membership from cradle to grave and empower one another to be in ministry here in our community and throughout the world. Additionally, I've been meeting in small groups with different people and through Zoom with a lot. I have learned many of you in 2D. I am so ready to get to see y'all in 3D and to get to visit more with each of you. Additionally, as we gather now in this time, we know that there are storms rapidly approaching the Gulf Coast. I want to make sure that you know that as a church, we are as ready as we can be to support you, your family, or anyone that is impacted by these storms wherever they may go. Right now, we're in something that anyone who grew up on the Gulf Coast has learned and known their whole life, and that is what they call the cone of uncertainty. Uh, a storm may go this way or that way. And of course, we would never wish a storm to go to somebody else uh, instead of ourselves. But at the same time, we just hope they all just kind of disappear. But we know that sometimes they don't. And so we are prepared to help those in our community who might be impacted by a storm, as well as anyone wherever they may be. It is a great thing to be a United Methodist and a part of a connectional system by which the UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, 
deploys resources immediately, and then local churches like us gather together resources and help assist in the ongoing relief efforts when a storm strikes. So one of the things I want you to know when we're in that cone of uncertainty and that time of questioning where a storm might go, that even now you and your church are prepared to help others and to be a blessing through the grace we have in Jesus Christ. Since arriving, my most common question I have received has been due to the pandemic, when can we come back to church? And I completely understand the exasperation of that question. The, the simple answer is just as soon as it is safely possible. We have a reopening task force that is meeting on Mondays, and we are working together to find out from both local health officials, local government officials, and the statistics that we are able to get that are out in the open common spaces and learn from about how things are impacting our community to try to do our best to get open as soon as is safely possible. I do remind you, though, the work of the church has not stopped. We had our virtual vacation Bible school. We've had all kinds of other fun camps through Zoom and opportunities to be able to work together and collaborate. Many Sunday schools are continuing their work. Many small groups are meeting. And I am uh, thrilled that we have had these pop-up worship services. In fact, I was wondering if y'all weren't putting me through some form of test or hazing as many of the times that I've done pop-up worship the last two times, last two months, have been well in excess of 95 degrees. And I felt like the sunstroked prophet Ezekiel, who I described in that opening day talk. On Thursday, September 17th, we are blessed to continue our pop-up worship. Additionally, we are going to do our best in that first few weeks of September to add sacred space hours where we will open up the Journey Worship Center worship space as well as over in the sanctuary that worship space so that people may sign up. And while maintaining safe distancing, those who are not at risk will be permitted to enter those spaces and to have an individual time of worship. We will have some guided prayers available, but just to get back into the space. And then I promise as soon as is safely possible, we will be gathering back for regular Sunday worship. Additionally, as was already discussed, we have the quarterly giving statements that went out, and I wanted to add to that just a thanks and appreciation for the staff who put together a giving report as well. This quarterly report will be something to inform us on items of membership and generosity in ways that we help, uh, in ways that we hope help many of us in our ability to learn, live, give, and serve. We also are doing dash charts throughout the church on each of the ministries to do a type of reflective evaluation and come to a deeper understanding of what's going on in all the amazing ways that this community is a blessing in the name of Jesus to the world. We've been doing confirmation on Sunday afternoons in this unusual time. And I want you to know that even as each family would enter and we would have masks and the clergy were all gathered with masks, the masks could not hide the smile and joy at these young lives giving themselves to Jesus Christ. Many of them would stand there and share words with us where they were responding to those uh, creedal questions of, do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? And many of them, when they would first get to it, would say, I do. <laughs> and then they would remember that they needed to give us the creedal response. Oh, I hope our hearts and our lives always have the joy of their incredulous I do. Yes, I do believe in God. I do believe in Jesus. I do believe in the Holy Spirit. For it is God who will continue to be the lifeblood of our church and congregation. 
For as God moves in our lives, no matter what cone of uncertainty we find ourselves in, God will lift us through that and above that in ways that help us, help us not just get by, but thrive and look to the future. And that's why I'm also thrilled and excited that here in the first few weeks as we've gathered the church council has announced a study committee. We believe strongly that 2020 has not gone as we would like, but we believe equally more strongly that this church will still be thriving in vibrant ministry out to 2030 and beyond. And we want to make sure that we are studying and prepared and ready for what is next in our faith journey together. And I ask you to pray for this study committee and its members to be lifting them up as we together share the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ for generations yet to come. Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Michael Jarbo, and it's my honor to share a bit of a reflection with you all this evening in a time of prayer. What we just heard from Pastor Morgan has been incredible, and it's a great charge for us all, especially at his very first gathering he gave tonight. What a special gift for us to get to hear. Truth is, we live in special times. We live in unique times right now as not just a country, but as a church and as a community. And through all that's going on, it's important for us to lean on the words of great writers of our time. One of my favorite writers is a good friend of mine. Her name is Brittany Wynn Lee. And she just came out with a, a collaboration of books uh, and prayers called Rally. It says, Rally, Communal Prayers for Lovers of Jesus and Justice. And she opens up a book, uh, opens up her book with a prayer called Sound the Alarm. And I want to read that to you. And it's not an alarm of fear or worry or doubt. It's sounding an alarm. It's sounding a charge for all of us to be witnesses of God's light in the world. What ha would happen if MDUMC was known as the light bearers of Christ throughout West Houston and beyond? So I invite you to posture yourself in a bit of prayer as we hear these words today and allow them to be a prayer for you for your brothers and for your sisters, and to God as we say this word. Calling all those partaking in a resurrected life who have known a death that did not kill them, come those with very little left to lose, and those holding most things loosely but love. We need you. Come all who are almost indifferent and undone, who are wielding disappointment as vigor. Come those who fell asleep in the soul's dark night, but have awakened with a heart full of hope. We need you. Come with your words, old, eaten, and new, Come, though uncertain about where it's all headed. Come with your aching need to be heard. And you, who are new to the listening, we need you. Come resolve to creatively find third ways. Come committed not to not rushing out of tension. Come with eyes unwilling to overlook injustice and a heart unwilling to forgo celebration. We need you. Come ragamuffin, radical, rebel, repressed. Come you who were wrong and willing to say it. Come refusing to deny the stories of your people. Come with the assurance of God's grace as your guide. We need you. Come marchers intercessors, artists, and prophets, come newcomers and those who have tried, tried again. Get close, get close, get closer now. Draw near, ask questions, sing songs, take steps. We need you together. And together, 
will be patient and mercifully kind, not envying, boasting, prideful, or rude, not selfish, short-fused, score-keeping, or spiteful, but rejoicing in the goodness of what's to be shared. We need you. We need you together. Because together, the movement keeps going. So sound the alarm, because love cannot fail. Come resistors, come revolutionaries, the meek who inherit the earth. There will indeed be a story to tell. And it is this, when the light was threatened, all God's people said, let's go. May it be so. Amen. Friends, it has been a pleasure to be with you tonight and to celebrate the ways that God is moving among us in this time of uncertainty. Before we close for the evening, I wanted to draw your attention to the What to Share section of your digital program found at mdumc.org gathering. In review, tonight we heard that one, our ministries continue to thrive even during this time of distancing. And our ministry leaders have been creatively adapting our summer events to the circumstances. And we're looking forward to continued innovation as we move into the fall. Second, the financial position of MDUMC is comparable to 2019, even in the face of COVID. Our year-to-date deficit currently sits at about $325,000 and your continued generosity is still incredibly vital to what God is doing in and through MDUMC. Third, we heard from Pastor Drew about the strategic and prayerful approach that we are taking towards generosity and the focus that we are placing on teamwork, tithing, and transparency. Finally, we heard a thank you from Pastor Brad for the warm welcome he has received. He also revisited his 90-day plan shared that the church will reopen when it is safe to do so, and discussed a study committee that has formed to examine the way our facilities and mission can align in order to make the most of what God has entrusted with us. As you know, the gathering serves as a starting place for information, and we hope these points will help you to communicate what you've learned tonight to your respective groups at MDUMC. Again, we are so thankful that you've joined us online this evening. We are here to help, so if you have any questions about the information shared during this meeting, we invite you to contact the church office via mdumc.org. We're thankful for you, we're praying for you, and we're looking forward to continued ministry with you in the months to come. Blessings.